everyone. Having very recently received this beautiful um, book by Hannah Carlson, Seasons, I couldn't resist doing some of the pictures from this page because we've got a whole autumnal Halloween-y type feel going on and I just wanted to have a go and I thought I would do it with you. Um, I'm going to try my Arteza Expert pencils just because I don't think I've tried them on Hannah Carlson's paper so I thought it would be a good thing to have a go at. Now we've got various different images here some of them are going to take some time like this one and some of them are going to be extremely quick like this one. I may combine a couple together like maybe the two gems because they're I don't know, but I have a think. But we're going to get started. And I thought I was going to do the more Halloweeny ones first because we're nearer to Halloween, and then do the less Halloweeny ones, just the sort of more magical type ones, autumnal ones like these down here, a bit later. So we're going to start with the pumpkins. I think that's a fun one. Now I know I've done a few pumpkin tutorials already, quite a few, as even with Arteza pencils, but I thought we'd have another go. Um, I'm going to move the book into the middle. There we go. I'm sorry about the light today. The sun is shining. It's coming right into the room here. And I've shut the blind to try and stop it, but my camera's trying to adjust for sunshine when it's not, when I've shut the blind. When it's open, the page is almost black. So I've done the best I can with the light. So hopefully we'll manage. I'm sure we will. Right, so I'm going to start with oranges for my pumpkin. Now I usually like to start with my lightest orange and then move darker when I do a pumpkin. It's not the way I always colour but I don't know why that's how I do my pumpkin. So I'm going to actually start with my, I'm going to find it, hold on, the pumpkin orange in the Arteza. That's the sort of one of the lightest mid oranges um, and I'm going to colour both pumpkins with this just in a light layer just to get us started really. And then we'll see where we go from there. I uh, I think this might be the last pumpkin picture I colour, although I do have another one with just a couple of pumpkins in that I may do. But we'll see. Um, it's, uh, it's Halloween for me, it's not a big thing that I celebrate. And I love autumnal colours and colouring, you may have noticed already. So that's great, but the sort of pumpkins and things it's you know it's a bit samey keep colouring pumpkins all the time but maybe I should do a few that look a bit more like green sort of squashes or pumpkins rather than always doing them orange but it just feels like orange is the Halloween pumpkin colour I don't know it's just it's just how it is here in the UK I don't know if it's the same everywhere else if you put a pumpkin on your doorstep for Halloween I actually noticed a few out and about when I was out yesterday um they're always orange it just seems to be the way and I'm going to do this one the same with this lighter one, but I'm probably going to do them slightly different if I can, just because um, I think it'll make it look a bit more interesting, really. We could do them both the same, but uh, we'll just get a bit of orange down on this one too. And then we'll concentrate on them on um, one at a time. Sorry, it's a bit messy there, isn't it? Never mind. We'll just put that to the side. We'll grab our darker orange and oops and that's just orange okay it's called orange just going to sharpen it and show you how I like to use the orange in the pumpkins oops. so I like to start to mark out the areas that I think should be a little bit darker so in here where it's dipped in there and there okay as I think the bottom would be darker just because of shadow so I'm just going to mark it out I'm still keeping fairly light because uh, I haven't it's sort of I've got a lot of other bits and pieces planned with regards to shadow and shading like that now normally with a pumpkin well you think about the shape this bit is going to be of this big pumpkin ignore the little one at the minute this bit's going to be bowed outwards this is further away from us this is closer this is further away so this bit's going to be lighter it's going to cat because it's closer to us so we need to bear that in mind a little bit when we're coloring so maybe this top bit you might like to think oh that'll be a bit dark but actually catching the light along there if you just put a little bit of a darker bit there just the tiniest bit and then leave that bit I think it might work. We'll see how it goes as we colour. Now each of these lines 
actually represents a dip in the pumpkin. If you think about the shape of a pumpkin, it's not smooth. It has little sections that are all dipped in. So I'm going to sort of highlight these with my darker green and then slowly fade them out a little bit like this into each section because each section of pumpkin is going to be shaped so it will be dipped in near the line closer to us here and dipped in there so that's what I'm going to try to show a little bit from this colouring it's not always that easy um, it depends how the pumpkin is drawn to be honest um, it also um, depends on how it's positioned on the page what else is going on around it and um, what pencils you're using and all sorts of factors but uh, we'll just have a go to see how we get on so again this one is a larger slice piece section I think is probably the right word so we just take our dark color a little bit further in you don't have to worry about this too much we're going to add more layers of color different colors I'm going to go in with a sort of orangey brown in a minute more of a sort of sienna -y color let's just fade that in a little bit to uh, really try and show shadow but I'm just gently marking it out as I say normally I start with my darker colors first but for some reason when I do a pumpkin I will start with my lighter color first I just know why I'm reason for it so I'm looking for the sort of sienna orangey browns and we have got this color this is called Sienna Brown. Oops, oh, it's very difficult to read Sienna Brown. You can see it's quite orangey, but it's quite dark. You have to be a bit careful. I am sharpening it now. When you've got a very sharp pencil, you do need to be wary because it can burnish. This one's broken. I've resharpened it. It can um, burnish right down into the paper. So you have to be a little bit more careful when you're applying it. Don't push down really hard um, firstly if you push down with your it, it's broken again if you push down with a really hard lead you um, risk um, making a hole in your paper I mean this is great paper in this book it's very unlikely that you would do that but it's always a good practice there we go to look after your pencil and your paper so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on this bit and I'm just going to gently build up a dark layer along this black line I don't want to put too much down to start with because I want to be able to look at it and see if it's looking how I want it to look. I'm going to fade it out a bit but not as far as I did the other orange and I'm thinking about the fact that this segment would probably be in front of this segment um, because of the direction we're looking at it from. So I'm not going to put any of this dark one this side, only on the far side of the line like that. And then I'm going to do the same on this one, so it's only on the far side and on top of the line, if you wish. I quite like covering the black line a little bit. It doesn't cover it completely, of course, because it's quite defined, but it helps a little bit like that. And then the same on this one. What I'm thinking is we're looking straight on to the pumpkin. This is the bit nearest to us. And so as we look, the this section is going to be in front of this section which is going to be in front of this section that's how my brain is thinking of it so we'll put a little bit in there we'll put a tad in here just near to the uh, um, stem on each side now I'm thinking this side will go on the right hand side of this so we've got no brown on this front segment at all at the moment I may change my mind I am fickle I do do that <laughs> and then this one on the far edge of this piece and hopefully it starts to look a little bit more three-dimensional and a little bit more like the segments are separated a little bit by this sort of shadowy area like that now I'm going to go back in with um, the orange this is just a plain orange and just now 
extend those areas out a little bit. I don't want to go too much over that sienna. I don't want to fade it. But where I started to fade it a little bit, I can blend it into this orange a tad. Like that. Just go all the way around. Just slightly extending it a little bit. Trying to scumble the edge so we haven't got a line. We have a little bit. We'll, we'll keep working on it. And then along this one. Let's go back up and just scumble the edge. Scumbling just is a round and round movement. Just to stop you having a flat line. Okay. And then I'm just thinking, yes, we'll go in with the pumpkin orange and do another layer of that. Okay. So on this very end segment, we're going to take that colour across just a little bit and then bring some colour from the far end. Just to find that edge a little bit. And leave a lighter section in the middle just to give it some shape. And the same here, we're going to go over the top of the edge of that just to stop us having a flat line and then bring a bit in from that side that was quite defined anyway yeah and we're going to do the same here just to find that side and again leaving that edge now this section that you've left you could leave it as it is or you could go over it in a lighter color like a yellow just to make it look less white because we've got a bit of paper showing through there I'm taking this quite far in because this is a big section as we as I said to you before so we're going to take it quite far in towards the middle now I realize I wanted some shadow at the bottom and that's sort of disappearing on us we can put that back in in a minute I don't want it to be in the sienna brown I want it to look a little bit different so I'm going to use a different color I'll show you in a bit And so we're just doing the same thing on this side. Now getting this edge is quite tricky because it's really narrow. I'm just doing the best I can. And uh, I've gone out of the lines. I'm just going to try and erase that a little bit. There we go. It erased quite well. I can still see it, but it's erased better. Now... I'm going to do my darker shadows now before I go for my light highlights. I don't know why. I'm going to use actually quite a dark brown. This is the cocoa brown. So it's quite dark, but I'm going to use it very gently. I'll show you. So from the bottom, I'm just going to gently layer it up a little bit. So I'm only going to put quite a, t a small touch down here. And then I'm going to have a good look at it after to decide whether it needs a bit more. I think it does need a little bit more. It's better to build it up in layers and then you can, you know, just keep examining it and seeing if it works. It's very easy to look closely at just the little bit you're colouring just this section here for example but what you need to do is look at the whole thing and decide how you feel about it what I'm also going to do is put a little bit in there and there just scumble that out a tiny bit it's not a harsh line and then I'm going to go over the top of these black lines just on the black line nowhere else just to try and make it look a bit browner <laughs> it may not make a big difference but now if you feel like you're gonna go off the line try and go to the side where the shadow is rather than the lighter side it's a bit tricky there we go now I'm going to finish off with a lighter colour um, we're going to use I think hmm use the Tuscan Sun I think I'll use that it's a sort of orangey yellow looks very orange in this light maybe too orange no I'm not this too orange I want something a bit lighter 
I'm going to try the sunflower yellow. It's still fairly orangey, it's not a sort of lemon yellow. But I'm just going to go over that light bit just a little bit, just to make it look slightly warmer and glowier. And not look like it's just paper showing through in our colouring. like that. Now I haven't done any shadow around the edge of the other pumpkin which is what I'm going to just do now. Now we want something a little bit more defined than this sort of very light shadow here. So I'm going to go right up against the edge of it and try and put down a fairly heavy layer just there like that. Let me just brush a bit so you can see. You can see that. We'll go take it on up but not so thick up here. I'm pretty much going over the black line. Just taking it a little bit beyond. And then we'll do one on the right, a bit more on the right hand side from the um, stalk stem whatever it is you call it. I use the words interchangeably. I'm sure that's probably not the right way to do it. There we go. Now we're going to do this little one with a bit of green in. And we also need to use some green for the stems. Now this is my favourite green. <laughs> this is the pear green. The number is rubbing off as well as the name. It's really quite small. What I'm going to do is do our stems with it. I just think it goes beautifully with orange. And you can um, buy Arteza Expert pencils open stock, but only in boxes of three. So I'll be able to get myself a replacement. Um, what I'm actually going to use for the stem is some Coyote Brown. Now the Coyote Brown is a very browny green. I'm just going to use a little bit to create a bit of shadow. I'm thinking where these lines are maybe it indicates there's a bit of shape in the uh, in this and there. Maybe like that. And do the same here. Can't see so much maybe there. Here, a bit like that, and then I'm going to get a green. I should use whoops, the moss green together with that pear green, and uh, just put a little bit around in some of the areas I want to be darker, like that. Now I'm going to use this moss green a little bit in this pumpkin. Now I haven't got a guide picture so I'm a little bit nervous because I'm not very good at guessing what things look like. What I'm going to do is hmm, maybe just follow these lines and make these a bit green. So I have a little sort of a bit of a green bit in the middle. Maybe that's what they might look like, like that. Don't really know. I am. Um, I was looking at. Um, Chris Chang has got a gorgeous um, sort of autumn pumpkin picture with squirrels and things. It's absolutely fabulous. I was having a look at that um, the other day. This is the pumpkin orange. We're going to go in. Actually, that's the palest orange. We're going to do it the other way around. We're going to do our darker one. We're not going to. Yeah, I think we we'll use a little bit of the sienna brown but we use it slightly less it's really hard to see that one um, use it slightly more sparingly so still on those edges um, yes she's got a beautiful um, picture with pumpkins and some of them are green one of them's orange and green it doesn't look anything like mine uh, not that I would ever try and copy anything of hers it's just wonderful but uh, I find I know that a lot of beginners want to do things like her and then when you start the video it can be a little bit daunting but uh, if you persevere, wow, it's worth it. I've done a few, 
quite a few. But um, And you learn so much because she is so experienced. So I'm going to go with the orange now. And what I think I'm going to do here is take it from the bottom and try and make it a bit darker at the bottom than the top, than the middle, I mean. Um, yeah, so you can learn loads. And even though I, I've i never followed along with her with Prismacolor, she always uses Prismacolor pencils. I've only recently got my Prismas. I haven't done a Chris Chang video since I got them, although I kept keep thinking I need to. I haven't. So uh, I've always followed along with Polychromos and used Colour with Claire's conversion chart to work out what colours to do, which is always quite a challenge um, as well because you have to keep stopping seeing what colour she uses, stop the video, look it up, grab the right pencil. It slows you down. But um, it means you can still do it even if you haven't got the right pencils. And Colour with Claire and um, I'm going to do these bits where I put the dark colour on and um, just go over them with this. Colour with Claire and Emily Illustrator both have free colour charts that you can use. I'm sure there are others. Those are the ones that I know about. Okay, where should we go from here? Let's try a let's try a marmalade orange, some more peachy tone to this to just fit in the areas that I want to be a bit lighter. And then it will look a little bit different to this one rather than using a yellow. I still want to make it lighter in the middle, but I can just fill it in a bit. Um, yes, yeah, so it yeah it takes me a Chris Cheng, a typical Chris Cheng video it takes, I think they're usually about one or two hours. It takes me at least six hours to complete the picture because I have to keep pausing. Also, she'll do a bit say she'd do this one and then she won't do that one so you have to do that one on your own so it takes you time to catch up which is fine but I find it a little bit tricky because she might do that one but it not be in shot and you've moved on to something else and you suddenly notice you should have gone done that one so you have to go back and remember how to do it and what colors she used for the previous one so uh, I would just like it if she could say well, which I know she doesn't speak, but she could say, right, I've done that one. You do X and Y and Z the same. And then you could pause the video and uh, just go over those. Sorry, I know I shouldn't be decolouring that one. <laughs> just chattering, I'm not thinking. Okay, I, I think I'm going to finish there. I rather like how they look. They're different. So this one's got its shine going down and this one's got its shine going round, which is probably not a good idea. Um, perhaps I need to put a bit of darker colour here. Let's do that. Let's even it up a little bit. Um, yeah, let's use the cocoa brown, which we use for the bottom. Just take that shade up a little bit higher. So I'm just going to darken it a bit at the bottom. Just take it up a bit. Like that. And put a little bit more on the top. so that we can see that it's um, rounded and a bit more shaded. Oh, my son's just started streaming. There. Now what you could do is put a little bit of shadow underneath them as well, like this. I've still got this cocoa brown. Just on the ground, so you can see that they're not floating in the air. Just a tad. I'm not going to do any more because it's really close to this next bit. So there we go. There are our two pumpkins. I had great fun with those. So I hope they're okay. Um, I'm not sure which bit to do next, but I shall choose something for our next video. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do this as a continuous series, day after day after day, or whether it'll be a bit broken up. I haven't decided being very indecisive at the minute and it does still depend I'm still getting workmen in so and I never know when they're coming it's like ugh. I had someone in Monday last week and then no one for the rest of the week and then I had someone in yesterday but not today it's Tuesday today so I don't know if I'm getting anyone later in the week or not I emailed the guy the head chap and haven't heard back so I just I'm a bit lost I can phone if I need to know but uh, you know 
It's I don't like to keep nag nag bagging all the time. But anyway, we'll see. But that's uh, that's our pumpkin, which I had great fun with, or well, pair of pumpkins. So uh, there we go. I mean, if you want this one to look a bit more realistic, you can go and look one up and and try and copy it a bit better. <laughs> I just I just met just did something from my head. But um, anyway, thank you for watching. I um, hope you have a really lovely day and happy colouring.